And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Each year I try to play all the Spiel des Jahres winners, and so far this year I've played four of them, uh, or the nominees anyway, and Finca is one of the ones I played, and this was the one I thought would win, although Dominion did win, and I'm glad for that, but Finca is a very simple, light family game. In fact, it fits in that category of games where I'm thinking, wow, you know, this is just so relaxing to play. It's very enjoyable. There's some decent decisions to be made in it, but it's so easy to play. You can play with your family, your kids. You, uh, I can play with almost anybody, and they'll have a good time. It flows very easily. It makes sense. Um, and it's probably too simple for some people, but I do enjoy it. And for nothing else other than the fact that there's some really cool fruit pieces. Well, let's take a closer look at those pieces. Here are the wooden pieces that come with the game, and I'm so thankful that instead of using cubes, they decided to use things like these rounded pieces for the oranges and lemons and and uh, figs and the grapes and the almonds, and it's just it's a really nice looking uh, pieces that come with the game, and people like them. As we look at the board itself, you'll notice this big map. Uh, this nice island on it, and you know this, it's really superfluous. The only thing that really matters, and the island matters a little bit, but the only thing that really matters is this rondel up here. Now on this device, players will take turns at the beginning of the game placing their figures. But on your turn, you have two different things that you can do as a player. You can get fruit, or you can deliver fruit. When you get fruit, you pick one of your pieces, and you'll move it in a clockwise direction. The amount of spaces you move it are the number of pieces where it's located. So for example, if I want to move one of these green guys, he would move two spaces because there's two guys there. One, two. If one of these blue guys would move, there's three spaces so that he would move one, two, three. Wherever you land then, you get pieces of fruit that are equal to the piece you've landed on that equal the number of players that are there. So for example, the green guy moved there, there's two pieces, there's two guys there, so he would get two oranges. The blue guy where he moved to, there's now three people there, so he would get three lemons. If for some reason you don't have, there's not enough fruit in the uh, pile, the discard pile of fruit, then everyone has to return all the fruit of that type. So you could force people to return the fruit. I guess there is a little bit of nastiness. I've played multiple games and I've only seen it happen once so far. But this is a very intriguing idea. And also, when players cross... This, there's a line here and a line here. They're both marked with these little donkeys. When their piece crosses that, they can take one of these donkey tokens. Now, they need these donkey tokens because they want to do the other thing, which is deliver. Now, there are spots in the map where you can deliver. Each spot has tiles, and these tiles need a certain number and type of fruit. For example, this spot needs two grapes. This one needs three grapes. Sometimes... They need multiple things. For example, this one needs two lemons and two almonds. And so, or two, I'm sorry, two of the green fruit. But anyway, uh, as players, if they want to deliver fruit, all they have to do is have those types of fruit and give up one of their donkey tokens. Give up one of these, you can deliver up to six pieces of fruit. So I could do this four but I couldn't do the three. However, I could do a four and a two if they were available on the top. You deliver the fruit, you take the tile, and you place it in front of you. When you take the last tile from a spot, then we look at the bonus tile, and one player is going to get the bonus tile. We look at all the tiles that a player has in front of them, and for example, this bonus tile is asking us to look for the almonds and the figs, and so I look in front of me, there's one almond and one fig on the tiles I have so far, and that's, that's it. So I have two. Whoever would have the most of those would get the bonus tile, which is worth points at the end of the game. Also, the spot that is now empty has a marker placed in it, and when a certain amount of those markers are placed out, the game ends. And that's pretty much it. The only other thing I would note is as you get these tiles, if you happen to get one, two, three, four, five, and a six tile, then you get a special bonus tile for getting one of each, which if you're the first person to get it, it's worth seven points. At the end of the game, you add up all the points you've gotten, 
and whoever has the most points is the winner. Easy game to play. Easy game. The, as I said, the board itself, this map doesn't really matter. You could put 10 piles. You don't need to travel to one spot on the map. You can deliver anywhere you want on the map. Uh, but it, it, it's a nice centerpiece, and it's, it adds to the theme of the game. But all the action comes up here in the rondo. Are you going to move to a spot of the fruit that you need? Or are you going to go to a spot where you'll get more fruit because everybody's clumped up there? How far will you move? Will you get one of these donkey tokens? But see, what I didn't tell you about were that each player gets four special tokens. At the end of the game, every token you don't use is worth two points. However, they let you do things. One of them lets you move twice on the rondel on your turn. Another one lets you move anywhere you want on the rondel, but you don't get the donkey. Do not pass go. Another one lets you make a delivery, but you can deliver up to 10 fruits at a time. I don't think I've ever seen a game where this wasn't used by almost everybody. It's a very useful tile. Another one lets you make a delivery for one less. Some of the deliveries have question marks on them, which means you can deliver any fruit, as long as it's all the same type. But still, easy as pie to play this. Everyone's collecting fruit. Oh, okay, my turn to move. And it's a game that I almost always see a conversation about other things happening. And it's a game that I haven't any... I have yet to hear, oh, this is too hard. No, this is a very simple, straightforward game. And thus, that's why it's in my collection. For me, personally, it's a bit simplistic. I find it a little too easy, and the strategies, it feels a bit samey. But I have it because the components are fantastic, and it's a game that I can get pretty much anybody to play. It's about collecting fruit, something that people might enjoy, and just the whole idea of collecting it, selling it, is very simple, very easy, and... Lots of fun. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.